So now I want to continue with digital library history, um, or I should say with digital library projects. Uh, but I want to pick up before the National Science Foundation's workshops in 91 and 92. So here's the thing. Once you start asking the question, what is the origin of digital libraries, you find yourself going back to the invention of the computer, which is kind of ridiculous. But it just goes to show that it's difficult to put your finger on exactly what we mean by digital libraries. So Vannevar Bush in 1940. <clears throat> 1945 wrote this article for the uh, Atlantic called As We May Think and in it he proposes this machine called a Memex and I'm not going to get into the mechanics of this and what he's proposing but basically he's now credited with the idea of inventing hypertext. You could reasonably say that the Memex is a personal digital library. Uh, fast forward 20 years J.C.R. Licklider writes a book in 1965 called Libraries of the Future. Um, in that book, in 1965, he predicts that by 2000, computers would be able to provide automated library services that could be simultaneously accessed by numerous users. That doesn't sound like a big stretch from where we are now, or were in 2000, frankly. Uh, in 1978, F.W. Lancaster writes this book called Towards Paperless Information Systems, which incidentally added fuel to the fire of the notion of the paperless office, which has yet to come to pass, but that's another issue entirely. In that book, he describes something he calls the library in a box, which is a standardized system that he predicted would lead to libraries becoming increasingly computerized not far off in 1978. So, okay, in the previous video, I spent a lot of time talking about the National Science Foundation and the Digital Library Initiative from the NSF really was critical in making digital libraries a thing, raising it to the public awareness. But actually, even before the Digital Library Initiative, uh, the Library of Congress launched a project that they called the American Memory Project, which was an effort to digitize primary source materials in the Library of Congress's collection and distribute it mostly to libraries. Um, it was distributed on Laserdisc until the invention of the web, but we'll come back to that in a moment. Anyway, American Memory still exists, and the Library of Congress is still digitizing its primary source material, because it's got a heck of a lot of it. In fact, Library of Congress has expanded the scope of their digitization efforts. Um, in 2000, the LC launched what's called the National Digital Information Infrastructure and Preservation Program, NDIP, uh, to fund research on digital preservation, to develop a national scale strategy for preserving digital materials. Um, so now let's pick back up with the NSF and what came out of those workshops in 91 and 92. Remember, the goal was to set an agenda for funding basic research and develop in, development in network technology using money that was appropriated from the high performance, the National High Performance Computing and Communications Initiative, which was created by the Gore Bill. So the NSF got all these researchers who are working in these diverse areas, database design, information retrieval, national, natural language processing, et cetera, et cetera, got them together to brainstorm what the future of high performance computing should look like. And uh, as an aside, I'd like to say some of those folks who were in on those early meetings in 91 and who are still active in digital libraries and digital library-like work today, or are just now retiring. Um, so the NSF gets these folks together in these workshops, and what they conclude is that they can join forces, their areas of R&D can play nicely together, and they can build a library online of basic science, engineering, and technology using the technologies that they've been developing. And thus was born the NSF's Digital Library Initiative. The NSF awards 
$26.8 billion in six grants to Carnegie Mellon University, University of California at Berkeley, UC Santa Barbara, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, University of Michigan at Ann Arbor, and Stanford. Those funded projects were to develop digital libraries, though what that meant really wasn't all that clear at that point. The University of Michigan project um, extended their prior work on desktop publishing, in other words, disseminating scholarly materials. Um, the UC Santa Barbara project was to develop a digital library of maps and images. Uh, Carnegie Mellon's project was to study the economics of online content, which is an interesting problem and one that still hasn't completely been resolved. So there's an interesting side note to the, the digital library initiative, though frankly it's a pretty major side note. Um, in November 93, the National Center for Supercomputing Applications at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign released something called Mosaic version 1.0. It was the first graphical web browser. Now, that really requires a whole discussion all by itself, and I'm not going to go there. Uh, but the upshot is that Mosaic was the killer app that made the internet a household name. Um, the DLI, Digital Library Initiative, calls the, the DLI call for proposals. In other words, the NSF sends out a call that says, we're looking for proposals for research in this track. The DLI call for proposals was in the autumn of 1993. The start date for DLI projects was September of 94. So DLI project proposals were being written just at the time that Mosaic was first released and gaining a user base. The DLI projects just didn't see it coming. I mean, who would? Not even the one at UIUC, interestingly, even though it's the same university. Uh, but prior to Mosaic, most of the content that these projects were working on was being disseminated on video disks, on local area networks, on custom built networks. And it was all very project specific. But once the graph was a thing, it immediately became obvious that that was the obvious way to disseminate the materials in these digital libraries. And nowadays we don't even think of the web as optional for digital libraries, it's just infrastructure. But it wasn't always that way. So the funding for digital library projects ran for three or four years, which is pretty typical for NSF-funded projects. In 1997, the NSF held another workshop because it was held, guess where, with many of the same folks in 92, new researchers who had become involved over the past several years to brainstorm about possible futures of, for digital libraries and to make recommendations to the NSF about continuing to fund digital library projects. The recommendation not very surprisingly, was that the NSF should continue to fund digital library development. And workshop participants identified three central issues in digital library research, systems, collections, and users. That is technology development, content, and user interfaces and usability. So the NSF launches the DLI-2 the second round of the Digital Library Initiative, which funded 28 projects this time. Some were continuations of DLI Round 1 projects, but most of them were new. Several of the DLI 2 projects had an undergraduate focus in investigating ways that digital libraries could be used in undergraduate education. Then after the DLI 2, the NSF launched the National Science, Mathematics, Engineering, and Technology Education Digital Library, the NSDL. So you like the nested acronym? The S stands for, the S in NSDL stands for Science, Math, Engineering, and Technology Education. SMEET, um, which is kind of an awful acronym nowadays that's usually called STEM, 
education, science, technology, engineering, and math, which is a much better acronym. And STEM education is still a big issue in the state and federal, in state and federal K-12 education. That's a whole other discussion. But note that much of that comes out of this digital libraries development. So the NSDL had four tracks, collections, services, and targeted research were similar to the central issues in digital library research identified by the Santa Fe workshop, content, users, and technology development, right? The fourth track of the NSDL was core integration. The core integration group had the job of making all of the digital libraries under the NSDL play nicely together. Basically, core integration's job was to manage interoperability for things like searching across all the collections, standardizing metadata, etc. Now, the very existence of a core integration group shows you just how complex a large-scale multi-institution digital library project gets which is something we'll come back to later when we discuss projects like the Digital Public Library of America. So there you have it, a brief history of digital library projects, mostly through the lens of the National Science Foundation, which did a lot of the early driving.